It's time for another Dice Tower Review with Z Garcia. Hey, hey, folks. Today I'm taking a look at Legends of Andor, a cooperative fantasy game which had been printed before in English by Fantasy Fly Games, but it's now being printed in English by Cosmos with a few very, very simple tweaks, mostly in the rules, uh, and the game uh, rules are now much clearer, which is great. The game, as I said, is a cooperative game, and uh, in it you are trying to stop the advances of the evil guys on your way to completing some specific quest that the game comes with that, that it calls Legends. It has several legends in it, and you are going to, depending on that legend, it'll tell you what it is you must accomplish together and beat the game. I'm going to be giving you a very basic overview of the game, explain a few systems, how they work in here, but I'm not going to be going into the nitty-gritty. You, you will not be able to learn how to play from this overview. Uh, so I'm just going to give you some concepts, and then we'll come back and I'll tell you what I think of this co-op game. Here we go. The first thing you'll do to play the game is figure out what legend you'd like to do, and then you are going to follow this checklist here, which applies to all the legends, except the first one, which is an introductory legend, to sort of teach you the game. And uh, this is just basic setup that you are going to follow, and then you are going to move on to the legend itself. Each legend has a deck of cards like this. And so this is Legend 2, you have Legend 3 here, there are five in total. Again, the first one is really just sort of an introductory legend, so technically you just have four legends. And you are also going to figure out if you want to play uh, a harder mode or an easier mode, and that's what these are for. So as you can see, there's an A3 and a green A3, and you figure out if you want to play easier or harder and just leave that in and take out the other one. Uh, this is a new thing for this printing of the game. Previous printings did not have that. There was no, uh, no way for you to adjust that difficulty. So that's the first thing you do. Then you are going to start reading from those cards, which are going to give you some lore, give you setup information, and tell you what your objective is. Each player is going to pick one of the characters, and uh, the character itself tells you your special abilities. You'll be using it to track your strength and your willpower tells you how many dice you get, and then over here are the spaces for you to put equipment and money on them. Uh, each character is double-sided, so you can pick if you want to play the female or the male side. That's up to you. There is a female standee and a male standee, actually, for everyone. So in this case, I'm going to be showing you a game with two characters, and we have here the warrior and a dwarf. All right, so I'm not actually going to be showing you any one specific legend here. I'm just going to be showing you the basics of how the game operates. On your turn, at the beginning of a turn, we are going to uh, be up here in the sun box, and someone is going to take their turn, which is whoever's in this uh, space here. And we are going to basically, each player has uh, seven hours in the day that they can spend to move up on this track up here. Normally, you spend these hours on this track to move or to fight. Uh, and so, for example, if I am this character, I am in this zone here, every zone is numbered, by the way, then I can spend, say, one, two, three to move, uh, one, two, uh, three spaces, let's say, okay? And so, I've moved, that would be the end of my turn, there is a few things that could happen when I'm done moving, and that is if I end where there is a well, which are these tokens that begin on the board, then I'm allowed to drink from that well and give myself some willpower. Willpower in this game is basically your life. And if I end up with a fog token, which are distributed randomly at the beginning of the game, if I end it, then I must flip it and I must deal with it. This one gives me plus three willpower, then we remove it. Some of them give you gold, which you'll be able to spend at the stores, which are... Uh, there's a few here on the board, and, and they're represented by that symbol there. You'll be able to spend money to buy some items. I'll show you those in one second. And there's a couple that are monsters that will show up, etc. Uh, so that's movement. And then once I'm done doing all that, then it would be the next player's turn, and they would spend some hours as well to move, to fight, etc. 
The main thing here is that by you moving into a space with a monster, you do not fight. The monsters, the, the monsters do not attack you, you don't have to attack them. So it's a choice. You cannot move and attack on the same turn. And so let's say blue would have moved, uh, you know, let's say that took them four hours, and they moved, and then when it's their turn again, this player has spent some more hours, then they choose to attack. The way that works is you spend one hour, and you engage that monster in combat. So in this case, I am fighting one of these creatures here, and there's a few different creatures which you can see here on the battle track. And so I am going to mark that that's the kind of creature I'm fighting. They have, uh, it's printed right there, so they have four willpower, and they are printed right there. This is the smallest of the creatures, and so they have two built-in strength. The attack is going to be uh, based on my stats and the monster stats. And so my willpower is on 11, that means I'm in the middle row here. I roll three blue dice, which are my dice. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And my highest roll was a six. I add my strength to that, which is three, and so I rolled a nine. Then the monster would roll, and they roll whatever it says. In this case, this monster is, is two uh, red dice. They rolled four would be the highest, plus their strength of two. So let's, let's uh, say for now it was just, you know, it's a four. Uh, strength of two plus that is six. My total was nine. I would hit it for three, which means I take him down from a uh, four wheel power to a one. It's not dead, so I could spend another hour up on the hour track to attack again. Because uh, I have to make sure I kill it, otherwise it, it fully heals. It doesn't track damage. And so I could spend another hour and roll again. However, in this case, if the monsters roll doubles, they actually add the uh, add them up. So they, it's actually an eight plus a two. And so it would have beaten me and given me one damage, dropping me from 11 to 10. And again, I could continue fighting or choose not to fight. So it's nearing the end of the day here. The players are running out of hours. And so it's the yellow player's turn. If you go uh, up to seven is a free hour, you could decide to finish your turn whenever you want, jump back over here to the sun box. And if you're the first one back, you put it here uh, in the first uh, player space, so you know you're starting the next round. However, you are allowed to continue going past the seventh hour all the way up to the tenth hour at a penalty of two willpower for each of those extra hours, okay? So once both players are back, then the round is over, and we take care of some, uh, just some general upkeep here, and then resume with a new day. And so the order is printed right here under the box. It tells you to take a card and flip it. This is an event. And so you'll read this out loud and see what happens. In this case, it says, every hero whose time marker is presently in the sunrise box gets two willpower points. Great, that's a good one. Uh, there are many, many bad ones as well. After that, the monsters will move, and we have a very specific order in which they move. The monsters move on the board following a series of arrows that are printed on the board, and so you go from the lowest number to the highest, moving everybody. And if someone would land in a space where someone already is, a monster already is, then they skip that space and continue moving, okay? And so, uh, let's say we have uh, someone here, someone here, uh, and this player already moved, then this one doesn't actually go there, it jumps right over him, okay? Uh, once that's done, you replenish these wells, from which you drink and recover willpower, and then we move the token here on the side one letter up. Again, if you land on a letter that uh, ties into some, some legend card, then you must immediately, you know, flip that legend over and read what happens uh, where new monsters show up, what must now be accomplished, etc. So here's what the merchant board looks like, and you can here buy all the equipment, and uh, you also put the witch's potions over here. She is among the fog tokens. You cannot buy them from going to the store. You need to go visit the witch once you find her anyway. Uh, but, you know, we use this space just to store the tokens. And so you have many options here which change the way you play the game. And so we have a shield, for, in for instance, that, that lets you uh, either avoid a bad uh, event. When you flip over one of these event cards, if it's bad, then you get to damage your shield and avoid that event. Each shield is, is, uh, can be used twice, by the way. You flip it over for the first use and remove it completely for the second use. But also it lets you... Um, 
not take damage if you would take damage. We have over here the wine skin lets you move some spaces for free. The falcon lets you send someone else on the board an item so you can trade items. Uh, the bow lets you shoot from an adjacent space so you can attack from an adjacent space. Helm over here lets you, uh, if you roll doubles yourself, then you get to add the mob. Telescope lets you, when you are done moving, look into the adjacent spaces and see what will be there. Very useful for looking into the fog without walking in there and, and bumping into a monster, let's say. And so you get to spend your money. Everything's worth two gold. Uh, and uh, at the stores, you get to spend your money and buy these equipments. And then you put those on the... Uh, on the players, you know, on the player itself, it's a uh, shield over here, up to four tokens there. You keep your gold up here, and so that's the idea. You uh, get more gold throughout the game, and you typically start with some gold. You are also, by the way, allowed to buy uh, strength points for two coins here, and so you'll buff up your strength, which is what you add to your roll. Sometimes, if you don't want to buy any of this, or you really need to go up against someone very tough. And so that's basically it. There's a lot of other uh, uh, details I'm not going to go ahead and mention. Things like, you know, differences between the legends and uh, things like uh, team fighting where, you, where several characters can team up and fight a single monster and uh, lots of other things. The game is, is fairly intricate, but it's also very cleanly told and, and explained and it does, um, it does flow well. I am a big, big fan of cooperative games. It's probably my favorite genre of tabletop games, and this one is a really solid one. Now, I don't even like fantasy games typically uh, too much. I find uh, fantasy genres a little generic uh, for the most part. And this one uh, certainly falls into that trap a little bit. Everything's just, uh, you know, they have names for the monsters that are not the typical stuff, but the... Uh, player characters are, you know, warriors and dwarves and elves and stuff like that. And so it's a little generic for me, the theme, but the gameplay, I think, makes up for that in spades because it's very engaging. It's uh, both, uh, there's both dice chucking in here and puzzly gameplay. You have to be very careful with your actions. You have to plan out your turn, but there's a lot of rolling and hope you get lucky too. And I like that combination because it strikes a nice balance between the fun of, you know, just rolling and hoping and cheering and all of that, and then the, the planning with your partners uh, at the table, figuring out exactly how to tackle something like, oh, I need you to go over there. You're going to grab that. You're going to use uh, the Falcon to send it to me. I'm going to walk to the castle and deliver it. And then... Uh, Oh, I need you to stop this guy walking in the castle, so I need you to attack him. And, you know, then they attack and they fail, so you're like, oh, no. Okay, I'm going to run over there and help you team attack. And that's great. It's, it's uh, you know, it's story-driven and puzzly, which is a hard thing to, to do, I think, in co-op games. And this one pulls it off. Very cool. Now, it's not all uh, roses here. There are some things I don't like. The main one being... This game has four scenarios, really. Um, the first one, it's it's got five. The first one is an introductory one. You're not going to play that again once you know how to play. Not really. The original printing of this, or I should say the previous printing, from Fantasy Flight Games included cards that were blank for a sixth legend. And you, you one you made up, right? But at least they gave you the blank cards. Now, I never did it. And um, I don't know how many people would do it. But at least they gave them to you. They're not in here anymore, which is kind of a shame. Uh, they say you can get them online. But, you know, I figured I would mention it. There, there are no blank cards in here. They do give you new, you know, several difficulty levels now, or two, really, per legend. So I like that. The original printing did not have that. Uh... But the main issue is still there are not enough legends in here. You, you'll play through those four, and yes, you can play them again. You, you know, you can play them as many times as you want to. But um, I do wish there were there was more story content in here. One of the legends, 
I don't even really like that much. And it's on the back of the map. I did not show you the back of the map, but there are some caverns on the back of the map. They're just for one legend. I don't really like that legend very much. Uh, uh, but it's there, you know, and you have the back of the map that they can you can use for made-up legends or other legends you can find, download, buy extra legends, you know, whatever expansions. But uh, besides those issues I have with the game, this is a truly solid, engaging, fun co-op game that I would recommend to anybody who likes co-ops. And then if you are a uh, if you enjoy fantasy as well, then forget it. You need this game. Check this out. You know, so um, that's it for me. Legends of Andor, really awesome game. If you enjoy any of the things that are in this game, you should check it out. And if you enjoy more than one, forget it. Go out and get yourself a copy of Legends of Andor. I'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.